So, we have successfully completed two modules on the NPTEL course on advanced marine structures. In the first module very briefly just let us highlight what we discussed. We discussed about one of the important new design methodology which is ultimate limit state. We have understood that how the post elastic behavior or the plastic analysis and design is useful in estimating the maximum load carrying capacity of a given section under uniaxial tension or compression or under the combined action of tension or compression and bending. So, we also discussed something about the safety factors. We put them as partial safety factors because they do not account for all kinds of uncertainties which are available in estimating these may be material characteristics because safety factors are associated with two things one is associated with the load other is associated with the strength of the material essentially safety factors are accounting for various uncertainties involved in estimating the loads or estimating the strength of the material. We have also seen different theories of failure and therefore, why in certain cases the discrepancies existing in the second and fourth quadrant will govern or will dominate the failure phenomena may be in what kind of loading etcetera. We have also very briefly looked into the impact analysis of structures marine structures. In addition to we have seen different forms of marine structures where we have understood that in the analysis and design of marine structures the advancement term relates not to any new form, but new methodology of analysis and design etcetera. We have already said that in marine structures it is a form based design actually it is a geometric innovation which happens to cater to the expected loads which are counteracting or which are acting on the members of the marine structure at different sea states. So, people generally take a proven tested geometry or the prismatic layout of the members and try to modify intelligently and innovatively to take care of the forces which are encountering these members or these structures at deeper waters. One such example could be an offshore tracer or top, other could be a response control using tuned mass dampers, tuned liquid mass dampers etcetera. In the second module we discussed about the flow induced vibration characteristics, how are they controlled practically, what are the different aspects of controlling this, why they should be controlled and what are the different ways by which they can be controlled. And one of the intelligent way what people have practiced in recent past is how to use perforated members or perforated cylindrical covers on existing members, which in addition in about reducing the flow induced vibration it also reduces the force acting on the inner cylinders. So, there has been experimental numerical analytical studies report in the literature which has been discussed briefly for your outline to understand that how this can be. So, the reinsistent was in this particular module was the flow induced vibration and its effects or consequences on the structural action of the members. So, the domain of interest for us in the discussion of module 2 was about the structural response of the members or the structures and it is not the hydrodynamic response hydrodynamic characteristics of computing or estimating the flow velocities and disturbances around the wake region of the member that has got to be addressed by a separate course where you can understand them in hydrodynamic aspects in detail. Now, having said these two modules clearly understood most important question now comes here is. There exist uncertainties in the load as well as in the strain. Okay. How are they addressed actually in the design and analysis? The moment I say uncertainty, I can say they are unknowns they are not very clearly known, they are not completely defined that is why we call them as uncertain. 
the one which is not completely defined will always have a guess is it not the one which is not completely defined can always have a guess the guess can go sometimes right sometimes it can go wrong also it means there is always a risk associated with any parameter that is guessed ok. But can this risk or alternatively can this guess be mathematically handled can I handle this guess mathematically ok that is where reliability plays a role. In simple terms reliability can be defined as a mathematical way or manner to handle guess which otherwise results in risk. So, conventionally reliability is defined as a process or a method that implies limit state probabilities of a structural system under adverse environmental load. So, there are three key words here which one has to understand before we discuss reliability in this unit slightly in detail. Of course, reliability of marine structures itself is a full course of three credits which will not be discussed in detail in this particular course on advanced marine structures there is only one small module where we are going to discuss in about 6 to 7 lectures. So, we will very briefly discuss about reliability in this particular course. The key words when we talk about conventional definition of reliability is it is actually a method is it an analytical technique or design technique ok because whenever I say a method is it meant for analysis or is meant for design is it useful for mathematicians or useful for engineers when I say design I focus on engineering practicing professionals when I take about analysis I focus on mathematicians or analysts or researchers is this method a design technique or an analytical technique we must understand how to define this very clearly. Now, this implies a limit state of probability we already have understood there are different limit states one important limit state which is essentially practiced in marine structure design is ultimate limit state ok ULS which we have discussed in first module very much in detail. So, this implies limit state probabilities it means a guess which is uncertain on certain parameters or handle using some theory ok. So, there is a rational way of handling this uncertainties that is why it says probability. So, now onwards we have got to have a very close pair of understanding whenever I talk about reliability I will always carry forward talking about probability along with reliability. So, reliability is not a certain format of answer it is a guess ok it is always some value of probability of accuracy is always associated with reliability that is why the term reliable is given ok it is very clear that it is not a definite close form discrete deterministic result on any process it is always having a probability of value attached to this process. So, it is a mathematical way of handling this ok. So, the guess is not handled rationally the uncertainties are not handled at random as the wish of the designer there are some methods there are some techniques of handling them using probability theory. The moment 
I convert uncertainties mathematically through the tools of probability what will I get is I get limit state of whatever I want maybe ultimate limit state limit state of serviceability whatever wish I wish it means reliability is a technique which bridges the uncertainty between the researchers on loads and string to that of uncertainties to the designer ok. It is actually connecting analysis and design ok it is a bridge which connects analysis and design or analysts and designers right. How accurate is a technique what are the parameters which can affect the accuracy of a reliability method this is what we are going to see. But it is very very important for me to understand the moment I associate probability to the term reliability automatically as a pair as a couple it is understood that my guess can go 100 percent wrong 100 percent right ok. So, there is again a superlative probability attached to the whole process of reliability that the whole process what you are trying to follow may be totally wrong ok. That should not happen because we are actually using this as a tool to only eliminate uncertainties. If this tool itself can take an answer to me or give me an answer to me which is completely randomly wrong then the tool is not effective. Therefore, there are discrete well defined procedures in the text in the literature through which reliability can be performed ok. So, the probability of your reliability technique applied on structures going 100 percent wrong does not exist. Alternatively the probability of this technique giving you 100 percent right answers is also does not exist ok. So, the variation is anywhere between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100 percent, but people have used this tool successfully intelligently that the guess or the probability what you adopt in this method lead you to answer more or about 70 80 percent accuracy ok this has been established. So, it is a mathematical technique it is a rational way of handling uncertainties. Now, interestingly uncertainties will be high in order when the loads become critical when the loads are non critical when the loads are not maximum when the loads are not collapse loads in terms of plastic analysis and design then associating uncertainties or the order of correction to this in a probabilistic tool is not required ok. Now, that is what designers have been doing designers have not been using or uh, reliability as a tool to design a structure they have been using partial safety factors as a part of addressing these uncertainties so far is it clear. So, partial safety factors or the technique of using partial safety factors to address uncertainties on the load and strength has been already in practice since 80s what we call as limit state design procedure. So, as a designer as a practicing professional I am already using or accounting for non-linearities which come from these two sources mainly on a given structural system ok. Then what is new about reliability as a new tool? Reliability as a new tool will address how accurate is this ok. It is focusing or highlighting or inciting the accuracy the factors the dependency and the reliability of these factors itself is that clear. So, far people have been saying I will use partial safety factor material as 1.5 for loading as 1.15 whether these numbers are accurate. So, people are not bothered about the number people are bothered about the process based on which these numbers have been derived ok. How reliable are these numbers? So, they have used probability tools to guess to gauge to judge to rank the accuracy of the safety factors. So, if you ask me a question whether reliability is a design process analytical process the answer is reliability should be a design process. Okay, because as long as you do not account for the load and strength simultaneously to land up in a structural system which would perform its intended function under the given adverse environmental loads it means I am talking about the functional aspect of the 
structure functional aspect of the structure is always a design parameter ok. For example, if you want to design a bicycle how many wheels the cycle should have, what should be the diameter, how many spokes, what should be the tyre rear and uh, front tyre pressure, what should be the chain diameter, what should be the chain sprocket ratio, what should be the island of the handlebar, what should be the laden weight of the square cycle all are analysis parameters. The functionality is cycle should be driven smoothly on an uphill and should be safely driven on a downhill functionality. So, when I talk about effective dispersal of these loads with the in effect strength available in the material under the adverse combination of environmental loads I am talking about the function of the problem or the structure. So, reliability should be a design method is that clear that is why reliability is focusing or show causing the accuracy of the partial safety factor which is again a design method only partial safety factor is used only in the design ok not for the analysis. I want to find the member cross section I have the working load coming on the structure I do a plastic analysis I multiply them with the safety factors find the collapse load or do an analysis using upper bound or lower bound kinematic theorems and get the design value which I call as a collapse load for the design value get the plastic section modulus design the section. So, all these parameters are associated with the design. So, reliability should be a design method is that clear because it is addressing most importantly one of this is this, but reliability is not correcting the accuracy of the partial safety factors reliability methods will not yield will not give you safety factors at all it gives you something different we will talk about that. So, therefore, be very clear that reliability tool is not to obtain the safety factors safety factors is examined using reliability tool ok look at this as a reverse process. So, this has not been a new engineering idea which is springing up only in the late, late 2000s etcetera this has been in practice in 70s indirectly we designers by accounting for this one may ask a very intelligent question sir structures have been designed for many years for 30 40 years without even using this as a design tool why we now look at this as a design tool why cannot we continue with this for the entire future what is the problem reliability will give you confidence in your design how confident you are about your statements in the design so far safety factors can never support your confidence level one may question why have we taken 1.5 why not 3 why not 5 why not 50 no answer because they have been purely based on the strength characteristics and the loads which has been studied for the past 50 years 40 years 100 years etcetera reliability has a power to foresee and to backsee the behavior of these variations with a large sample because it is taking support of probabilistic tools and probability and statistics can handle all these data in a very convenient and close form manner which we all know from the advanced engineering mathematics ok. So, reliability is a design tool it is evident and essential that I must understand this tool as a designer to improve my confidence level in the design process ok. So, it is not addressing any of the analysis tools at all, but there are different levels and methods of reliability which stops at analysis level which takes you forward to the design level there are different levels at which reliability can be done. So, reliability is nothing but addressing or rationally handling the uncertainties in two important parameters ok load and strength is that clear any questions here. Having said this let us talk about what is then the difference between safety and reliability ok. Let us divide a line and try to explain this simultaneously what is the difference between a safety and reliability or reliable design safe 
is there any marginal difference between this there are tremendous amount of variations between the statements of safety and reliability many variations are there they are not same at all let us see there are at least 10 variations we will see one by one. Safety is used to indicate reliability it is a count safety is a traditional concept whereas, reliability is a probabilistic concept. So, I can compare these points as a single point against reliability. Most importantly it is applied to an existing process it is applied to predict the unsafeness of the existing process. This has direct consequences of to failure it has got direct consequences this has got converse consequences that is very important. it is deterministic approach it is probabilistic approach it is not a design method it is an assessment tool it is a design method this gives a closed form solution it means it gives a fixed answer to a given problem. This depends on on the data and their reliability how reliable are the data. Therefore, this can even give results of high error that is possible, erroneous results are possible with reliability tool. safety is applied to an existing system reliability is used to 
the forecast the risk even before it occurs. So, one can say if your results are safe or if your structure is safe let us say if I read a statement saying the structure is safe okay, I can make I can declare the statement is non technical. If I say the structure is reliable I can declare the statement as technical statement. Safe or safety is related to the existing system under the given process of loads and strength. Reliability addresses the possibility of failure of the system even before any such failure has been recorded or addressed. So, it is one step ahead of safety. Okay. It is one it is marching marching forward compared to safety. Right? That is actually there are many differences as we listed here between safety and reliability people generally confuse these two adjectives that okay, if I say reliable it is definitely meant to be safe or if you say safe it is addressing that is reliable they are different entirely. Okay. So, the most important difference amongst all these will be this indicates direct consequence of failure if the structure is unsafe if the structure is unsafe it has got direct consequence to its failure whereas, this has got converse consequence of failure I will talk about that because reliability is 1 minus probability of failure. Okay. It has got a converse consequence of failure right. So, there is a very important difference between safety and reliability remaining all you can see very clearly that it has got different tools and safety since examining the given system which is present already the error the solutions can be more or less accurate whereas, if a process is not proper if your tools are not properly used it can give you a results of very high error as well. So, reliability may not be dependent result may not give you dependent result if your tools employed to perform reliability analysis is not properly chosen. Okay. So, it needs some training it needs some certain level of understanding of mathematics if you really want to do reliability study. As I said in the beginning reliability is addressing the design process okay. safety is not which is very important for an engineers perspective right. So, one must talk about reliability based design okay. whereas, partial safety factors are not reliability based design okay. the term safety itself I think now will you realize that partial safety factors which have been using in ultimate limit states etcetera addresses safety not reliability there is nothing like reliability factors. Okay. So, this table clearly and distinctly tell you where we are deviating from safety in terms of reliability any questions here. So, let us quick, uh, quickly, uh, quickly look at the critical comparison between safety and reliability not a design method it is a design method. safety is based on statistical judgment this is based on engineering judgment since it is statistical tools of analysis plays important role 
here the experience plays an important role. Most importantly an overruling judgment where the battle between reliability and safety has been won by reliability is any structure though declared safe should be analyzed using reliability methods if you want to explore the possibility of strengthening repair retrofitting of the structure. What does it mean? The statement is a very important judgment gave between the battle fought between safety and reliability. Now, it is very important and interesting to note when the structure is declared safe there is no necessity for repair. Okay? When the structure is declared safe there would be practically no necessity and requirement or demand for repair or strengthening is it not. But still if you really want to repair and strengthen on account of extending the service life of the structure, extending the capacity of the structure etcetera or making the structure safe for the futuristic loads etcetera, you have to perform reliability analysis. It means reliability methods very interestingly and dominantly override, overrule safety declaration statements. Okay. If you really want to strengthen or repair a structure or retrofit a structure, you must perform reliability analysis. Okay. So, safety of the structure is only a declaration as on the present state. Reliability of a structure is an assessment based on the present and futuristic state considering all uncertainties of load as well as strength of the material. Okay. So, it is a large domain which covers uncertainties in a more mathematical manner, more rational manner. You may wonder that this is using statistical tool, this compared to be more rational manner, okay. but this addresses the problem on the present state. This foresees the problem on the futuristic state. Okay. Therefore, it is much more advantageous, much more superior compared to safety methods. Is that clear? I think we have made it very clear that how reliability supersedes safety. Okay? They are two different things. Having said this, then let us talk about the question what do we understand by risk then? What do we understand by risk? Reliability is superior to safety, risk is again a term associated to safety only. Okay? If I say any specific process or event is risky, what I physically mean or mentally mean is that the process is unsafe. Okay. It is a converse, reliability is also a converse, then how reliability and risk are different? Okay. Risk addresses the consequence of failure also. So, on the other hand risk is nothing but a product of probability of failure into 
consequence of it. Okay? Whereas, reliability stops here. It does not talk about consequence of failure and reliability is converse of failure that is 1 minus probability of failure is reliability that will come later, but it stops in this domain here does not extend beyond to oversee or to look in sight of what is the consequence because of this failure. Okay? I can give a very simple example let us say an offshore rig is placed or deployed at a specific site, it is operating but still when they are permitting this rig to operate people have checked and proved that it is under safe operation is it not, it is safe but still on the basis of uncertainties applied to this process in terms of mechanical systems, in terms of structural systems, in terms of environmental loading coming on the system, in terms of impacts caused by the ships and boats or vessels on the system etcetera, how reliable it is. Reliability is assessed. Though safety is already there, but still reliability is assessed. I think you are understanding now. Okay, it's very clear that it is a go-ahead path of safety. It is beyond safety. Okay, and it has been declared that the probability of failure is maybe ten percent. Okay, it has been assessed and found out that the probability of failure is ten percent. It means it is safe and reliable by 90 percent. The question here is when such failure occurs what would be the consequence of this failure? The consequences can be on human life, on society, society means it can cause a oil spillover, the rig can break the rig can get uh, shut down, okay. it can cause environmental impact, it can cost, it can cause cost factors also, it can be financial implications. All these aspects which are the end product of any accident, end product of any system, because as a common man, as an administrator, as a legal personnel as a user I look only the end product of any system okay. the end products are essentially seen are the consequences. So, the reliability will say that the rig is operationally safe and reliable by 90 percent. So, there is a 10 percent risk associated with this which is addressing the consequence of failure which is not exploded by reliability studies. Okay. So, risk is in addition a value added to reliability study. Now, you can far compare this with safety, okay. it is far inferior. right? So, risk is an add on to a safety which also addresses the engineering perspective, the societal perspective, the human, the environmental and financial perspective. To the statement made against safety. Okay? So, risk and reliability should be seen together as a process evaluation. You cannot independently look at them, okay? but without risk looking at it reliability alone for engineering judgment it is fine, for a financial implication it is not complete. Okay. So, reliability does not give me the outbound products or results or deliverables as desired on certain segments by the administration or legal authorities. Okay. It gives me purely technical outbounds, 
So, to understand reliability, you must have a good practical experience and a good engineering judgment. Otherwise, you cannot understand what the outcome of a reliability study is. Is that clear? So, reliability is highly technical, risk is more or less non technical and more mostly towards financial. Okay? One can ask a question, what is the most important aspect of reliability? Most important aspect. The most important aspect is to account for practically all uncertainties that make the structure vulnerable. the failure for a predefined limit state that is the most important aspect it should account for all uncertainties that is the most important aspect of reliability study. Then one may ask a question, what would be the parameters which will affect the accuracy of the study? How accuracy of reliability study can be affected? The answer is very simple. The accuracy of the reliability studies, I am putting RS here, okay, reliability studies. See these short forms you have got to actually understand because it is important I keep, need not keep on writing. I want you to expand it in your literature and keep on writing properly. Accuracy of reliability studies depend or depends on how accurately these uncertainties are accounted for. The answer to the second question will be the answer to your primary question. You have to account for all uncertainties, how accurately you are accounting for them that will give you what is your accuracy of a method. Okay? Very simple. Now, very interestingly, a very sarcastic question. Why reliability analysis cannot be accurate? Why it cannot be accurate? What is the problem? There are actually three reasons for this. So, it means that reliability analysis, though I say analysis is a design method, please understand this. So, it is a tool. Reliability analysis cannot be 100 percent accurate. There are principally three reasons for this. Reason number one, it is practically impossible. to identify all 
uncertainties. Hence, engineering judgment is applied. That is the first reason. The second reason could be methods of modeling and analyzing them, them means the uncertainties are not easy. Therefore, many assumptions are, are made during analysis. These assumptions prevent the method to be 100 percent accurate. That is the second issue. analytical formulation of limit state surface and integration of probability density function. within the domain of interest is complex, it is not that easy, I will show you. The probability density function accounting for different levels of uncertainties will make the integration of this PDF very, very difficult. Okay it will not be possible at all. So, these three reasons clearly and explicitly declare that reliability analysis can never be 100 percent accurate. Okay? There is always a probability of accuracy attached to reliability methods by default okay? and that accuracy can never be 100 percent and all these reasons cannot be corrected also. You cannot say I will do analysis and modeling without any assumptions and idealization at all, just not possible because every modeling or every analysis tool has what we call structural idealization or certain assumptions. All these assumptions will prevent accuracy or will not take you towards 100 percent accuracy. This of course, you will understand once I showing you some expressions of probability density function, then you will see what is the complexity involved. Now, take it granted that it is having a very high degree of complexity when you are attempting to integrate the PDF over a specific domain of failure. This is actually a psychological or physical or an inferential reason that you will not be able to actually declare that you have accounted for all uncertainties because uncertainty itself is a term which is not defined. Okay? You cannot say can you define uncertainties, there will be uncertainty even in the definition. Okay? Uncertainty itself is a term which does not have a close bound explanation. So, one cannot say yes I have considered 
all possible uncertainties. The moment you are not sure about it, your analysis cannot declare or cannot be declared as 100 percent accurate. So, relativity methods are not 100 percent accurate, there are problems. Okay. We have understood, we have started introducing to you how reliability is different from safety and why partial safety factors which has been accounted by the designers for the past 30, 40 years in design principles need to be revisited, reinvestigated using reliability as a tool. Why? Because reliability is far ahead of safety, okay? but reliability and risk together will form a complete explanation and solution for a given engineering process. So, reliability is purely a technical solution which can be understood, which can be also prepared only by people who are having enough practical experience in design and who can apply judicially the engineering judgments on a given process because that is demanded. Okay? Whereas, safety is simply a statistical tool. Okay? That is what we will discuss in this lecture. We will take you forward to the next lecture explaining few more factors which are important for reliability analysis. Thank you.